Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Mishpokah. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda Ben Shomer, and today we're going to be talking about menorahs. Not all menorahs are created equal. Let me show you what I mean. What I have right here is a standard Hanukkah menorah. It is uh, made of seven branches, a seven branch menorah. And this is the style of menorah that was used uh, during the tabernacle and temple era. In Shmult, Exodus chapter 25, verses 31 through 39, I'm not going to read that, but you can check it out yourself, is a very detailed account of how the seven branch menorah is to be made. Um, in uh, Gentile versions of the scriptures, it may say lampstand, uh, lamps, or candelabra, but uh, this is in Judaism, we call this a menorah. And uh, the, the interesting thing is, is that when Hashem revealed the revelation of the menorah to Moshe, to Moses, he, could, he didn't get it. He couldn't understand this detailed, intricate um, piece of furniture that was to go into the tabernacle. But when he, um, when he relayed this information to the person that was to make the menorah, they divinely immediately got it. And it remained a mystery to Moses, interestingly enough. That's according to Jewish tradition. Now, it says that the menorah in the tabernacle and temple is made of beaten pure gold. And this is a picture of Yeshua because gold represents divinity um, and also re represents royalty. And, and Yeshua is the divine Mashiach, the divine king. And uh, it was beaten pure gold. Uh, the beating aspect uh, is representatory of Yeshua as uh, Moshiach ben Yosef, or Messiah son of Joseph, which is the suffering servant found in Isaiah chapter 51. Uh, not only that, but it's also representatory of Moshiach because uh, what does the menorah do? It, it gives light. It gives light to the place that it's in. And uh, Yeshua himself said in Yochanan, John chapter 8, verse 12, he says, Then spake Yeshua unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, it goes much deeper than this, folks, because the light he was talking about is, is uh, very, very deep and intricate and symbolic, and we'll get into that. Because first of all, first and foremost, the seven branch menorah represents the creation week, the six days of creation and the day of rest. But, I don't know if you know this, but it also represents the sevenfold spirit of yud heh vav -Heh. Because in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, it says, And the spirit of yud heh vav -Heh shall rest upon him. Who's him? It's Messiah. And the spirit of yud heh vav -Heh shall rest upon Mashiach. And it's the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the, and the fear of yud heh vav -Heh. So we have seven spirits and we have seven branches. Now, to my understanding and according to my studies, the menorah was lit differently in the temple than we light our menorahs today. You have this middle branch, which is called the shamus or the servant uh, and this flame, when it is kindled, is used to light the rest of the menorahs. So you, you, you light it um, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the way it goes. And this is representatory, like I said, of the seven-day creation week, six days of creation, the day of rest, and also the seven spirits of Yudhe Vave. So you would have the spirit of Yudhe Vave, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of Yudhe Vav -Heh. Now it's interesting. Um, you know, as, as uh, okay, if you put it this way, let's say that right here is the Ark of the Covenant behind the curtain in the Tabernacle Temple. Um, according to rabbinical literature, uh, after Yeshua's death and resurrection and the temple curtain was torn in two, uh, it's recorded that when the priest went to light the menorah, because they uh, you know, changed the oil in it or, or refueled it, I should say, um, every day, uh, and they had a problem lighting the branch that represents the, the sixth day of creation, the last day of creation, and also represents the spirit of knowledge. For some reason, they couldn't keep it lit. This was the the flame that was closest to the presence of yud heh vav -Heh in the temple, closest to the Ark of the Covenant. And they couldn't keep it lit. So what did this mean? You know, it's a mystery in rabbinic literature, but we know that because they did not understand the knowledge, they could not absorb and obtain the knowledge and, and fully comprehend the knowledge that Yeshua is Mashiach, 
this was symbolic of their ignorance because light represents, you know, like the light bulb when somebody gets an idea, it represents knowledge, illumination. And they were dark in this understanding. That's why this, this, this uh, uh, portion of the menorah could not stay lit because they did not understand the, the, uh, um, the knowledge of uh, that Yeshua is Mashiach. Now, uh, this is a seven-branch menorah, and all menorahs are not created equal. There is a nine-branch menorah. This is a nine-branch menorah, and it's called a Hanukkah, and this is the menorah uh, that is used during Hanukkah time. Uh, this is a little bit unusual because most Hanukkah, the Shamus uh, candle, uh, the middle uh, candle, is usually raised higher. But in this case, if somebody has a menorah where the middle one is not raised higher, they'll just use a candle that's taller uh, for the servant. But uh, why is there nine branches? Well, you have the one branch, which is, is the shamus, the servant. Then you have eight other branches representing um, the eight days of Hanukkah. Now, Hanukkah is called, uh, in Hanukkah in Hebrew is dedication. It is known as the Feast of Dedication. We see in the Brit Chodesha that Yeshua attends a celebration called the Feast of Dedication. It's Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is, uh, was modeled after Sukkot because Sukkot is an eight-day festival, and Hanukkah is an eight-day festival. During the time of Solomon, when Solomon dedicated the temple, he dedicated it around the time of Sukkot, and they had an eight-day celebration. Now, um, there was a time, long, long after Solomon, where the Greco-Syrians invaded Israel. They took over the Temple Mount and just totally ransacked and wrecked the temple. Uh, they slaughtered pigs and, and defecated and did all horrible stuff in tearing down the temple. And uh, the Maccabees, which were a group of, of Levitical priests, were serving at that time, and they became warriors. They fought the Greco-Syrians and eventually took back the temple. And as they were rededicating the temple and cleaning it up and purifying it, they noticed that all the cruises of oil were smashed or either invalid because they became impure for some reason or another, and they only had one cruise of oil left. And one cruise of oil equaled one day of a lit menorah. So after they cleansed the temple, by faith, they went ahead and poured that one cruise of oil into the menorah, and the menorah, uh, a miracle occurred, and the menorah stayed lit for eight days, and it took eight days for them to make more oil. So by faith, they lit it, and, and the menorah is only supposed to stay lit for one day, but a miracle occurred, and it stayed lit for eight days until they were able to make more oil. And uh, so that is the Hanukkah. Now... I'd like you to meet Manny the Menorah. Manny the Menorah is uh, the menorah that my daughter uses at Hanukkah, and we light the Hanukkah menorah differently. Um, let me turn it on here. It plays Rock of Ages, which not the one that's found in Christian hymnals, but a different one. Uh, it's uh, a Jewish song called Rock of Ages. So when we first light it, this uh, shamus is the first one that's lit. And then facing me, you have this candle right here. You know, this is, is uh, we light it from right to left. Let me go ahead and turn this off. We light the menorah from uh, right to left. Why do we light the menorah from right to, le to left? We take the shamus and we light this one, and, and through the eight, we light a candle for each day of Hanukkah, and we go from right to left. Why do we go from right to left? Because Hebrew is written in red from right to left, so that is one of the reasons why we, uh, we do it that way. So... Um, this is uh, my little spiel on uh, my little teaching on the menorah and on the different types of menorah and how it represents Yeshua HaMashiach. So I hope you've uh, learned something new today and I hope you uh, can uh, have gained the understanding, the difference between a standard seven-branch menorah and a menorah that we call the Hanukkah, the nine-branch menorah we use at Hanukkah. And uh, uh, maybe you'll remember this when Hanukkah rolls around and I encourage you to, uh, even if you're not Jewish, to get a Hanukkah and celebrate Hanukkah instead of Christmas this year. Uh, why? You say, I'm not Jewish. Well, your Messiah is Jewish. And it says in the Brit Chadesha that uh, Yeshua went to the Feast of Dedication. So Yeshua celebrated Hanukkah too. If it's good enough for Yeshua, why isn't it good enough for you? Don't you want to do the things that Messiah did? I do. And so I, you know, I, I'm excited and I'm glad that I can uh, celebrate Hanukkah just as Mashiach did. And if it wasn't for the Maccabees, Yeshua would not have been able to stand in a temple to be able to celebrate the Feast of Dedication and call himself the light of the world. 
So thanks to the Maccabees, they had a temple in Yeshua's day that Yeshua was able to go in there and fulfill prophecy, that a greater glory would come to that temple, and that he would be able to proclaim himself as Mashiach in light of the world. Running out of time here. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Bye.